How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can build a spaceship in After Effects using nothing but a little bit of advanced compositing. Let's go. Alright, let's get this locked off. All right, so before we begin, we're gonna need a few things from Google. We're gonna need a photo of some stars. We're gonna need a photo of a planet. We're gonna need a photo of the International Space Station with the window, and maybe one item or two items that we can animate within that scene. So I used a glove in that intro to try and block the light, and it kind of worked quite nicely, I think. So let's go ahead and use a glove. So just try and download an image that is high enough resolution that you'll be able to actually you know use it in a good quality but that doesn't look overly photoshopped you want something that is literally like black with a few dots on it so let's drop down the tools and go for a bigger size larger than let's say four megapixels all right we're just going to download this image by felix mitamaya felix i'm using this just for the demonstration if someone wants to actually use this commercially they'll get in touch with you although it says free for personal and commercial use no attribution required so let's just go ahead and use this. Thank you, Felix. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these in the space files folder. Just call this stars. All right, then back to Google Images. We're gonna look for planet Earth. And we're gonna try and make this a PNG so that we don't have to spend too long cutting it out of the background. That looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna save that image. Oh, it is a PNG, cool. Call that Earth. All right, then we're gonna need the International Space Station. And we're going to look specifically for the window. Now you can use any one of these, to be honest, as long as it's high enough resolution and it's sharp enough. You don't want the focus to be on the planet. You want the focus to actually be on the space station itself because we're going to be blurring it afterwards in After Effects. But we want it to be sharp when we're not blurring it. That's a Creative Commons one, so let's have a look at this. Yeah, that's nice and sharp. So let's go ahead and save this image as ISS. All right, and then finally, we're just gonna look for a glove as a PNG again, so that we don't have to cut it out. That looks pretty good. Storelli Exoshield Gladiator Legend GK Glove Black. Cool. All right, and now we're done with the image search. We can drag all of this into After Effects and start manipulating the files to create a 3D environment. So first off, we're gonna create a composition. I'm just gonna go for an HD composition instead of a 4K comp, because otherwise this tutorial is gonna struggle. Right, full HD, let's make it 10 seconds and 24 frames per second. Cool. All right, we'll call it Space Scene 1, just in case you want to make any other scenes after that. So we're going to take the stars, we're going to... Ah, those stars are corrupt. Okay, let's... Is that file corrupt though? How is that happening? I've just converted the stars to a PNG because there was some weird corruption going on with the JPEG file for some reason, so I just opened up in Photoshop, created a PNG. If you have any corruption issues, just find a different stars file. All right, dump that down there, lovely stuff. Right click, create a null object, then right click again, create a camera straight away. That way we're gonna create a rig. Enable depth of field and hit OK. Then you're gonna parent the camera to the null, turn that into a 3D layer by clicking that box there. And now your camera rig's pretty much set. You can hit P for position and then hold Shift and R to bring up your rotation. And we're gonna to wanna to keep the Z rotation. We don't really care about the others. So we're gonna hit Shift Alt or Shift Option and remove Y, X and orientation. And that way we just have position and Z rotation. Cool. Just hit keyframes there so that we can easily bring it back up with U in case that disappears for some reason. Okay, so now we're gonna turn our stars 3D. We're gonna enable motion blur on them. And then we're gonna hit position with P and we're gonna drag this all the way back, like really far back, like 20,000 back. In fact, let's just set that to 20,000. Then we're gonna hit scale with S and we're gonna scale that back up until it's just a little bit bigger than the screen. Maybe like, maybe like there. So you're getting that extra little bit past the edges. Cool, then we're gonna bring in our planet Earth and put it just above the stars. We'll make that again a 3D layer. Enable motion blur and then hit position and scale, shift scale. And we're gonna move this back to maybe, uh, let's say 15,000 because we don't want it to be at the same distance as the stars, but we do want it to be 
pretty far away. Now you can see that it has all of this background because it wasn't actually, you know, a PNG with no background. So that's kind of annoying. We're just going to double click this layer, open it up in the layer panel here, and then we're just going to apply a mask to it. So if you come over to the ellipse tool up here, just kind of keep your cursor roughly in the middle there. And we're going to draw out and then hold control or command and shift. And it's going to keep it as a perfect sphere starting from the center and just draw that roughly to about there. It doesn't matter if it's a tiny, tiny bit outside of those bounds because we're going to feather it and that's actually going to act as an atmosphere around the planet. So hit F on your keyboard. That's going to bring up the feather of that mask and just feather that out nicely to maybe, yeah, let's say 50 pixels. In fact, mine's a little bit too tight to the planet. So I'm going to double tap M to bring up all of the mask properties. And I'm just going to expand that mask a little bit. Now, if you come back to the composition scene one, there you can see your composition. And then you can really kind of fine tune and adjust your mask to fit. All right, so now let's scale up the planet because it's a little bit small there. Cool, and then let's bring it, uh, let's bring it over here because we're gonna want the source of light to be there because that's where that is on the planet. And then you know what? We can just rotate it a little bit like that so that the source of light can be here, which makes sense with how it's shining. All right, now the fun bit, we bring in the International Space Station. We make that a 3D layer with motion blur enabled and we're gonna hit scale and we're gonna scale this down until it fits in the window. But there. Again, we're going to double click this layer. We're going to zoom out and we're going to come up to the pen tool here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mask out those windows so that we'll be able to see all of the stars beyond them. So just take your time with the masking. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the better you can do this, the better the image will look. All right, once you have that first one masked, just hit M and subtract instead of add. And that way that mask is just going to take away that part of the image and just work your way through and do this to all of the windows. All right, and once you're done masking everything, just come back over to composition and bam, there's your space shuttle. Your view of space through the windows, lovely. Okay, and then the final thing is the glove. We're just gonna drag that in, make it 3D, Position, we're gonna bring this forward. So let's bring it to maybe negative 3000. That means it's 3000 pixels closer to the camera than the windows are. And then let's just scale that down so that it doesn't look ginormous. And then let's just mask it off because we don't want both gloves. We just literally want the one glove. There we go. That's our glove. So first of all, what we're going to do is animate the camera. Then we're going to set the focus to shift. So because we already positioned the keyframe, what we can do is zoom all the way in and you can see the way the stuff is moving there. It's all with a beautiful parallax. So for now, we're just going to set the focus on the background. So we're going to select the camera layer and the stars layer, come up to layer all the way down to camera here and just set focus distance to layer. That way that's set. We don't have to worry about trying to work in a blurry environment. Now the feathering on that planet's a little bit dark still, so I'm actually gonna bring down the expansion a tiny bit more, um, maybe just to zero and see how that, yeah, that looks much better. All right, so our position is set there. We're gonna come ahead maybe, what, two, let's say three seconds, four seconds even. Let's give it a four second transition. And we're just gonna bring this backwards into the space station to about there. And we're gonna just make this an easy ease in so that that camera comes to a stop there. Lovely. And maybe ease that out as well. Then we're gonna add some rotation. So let's set our finishing point there, hit a keyframe, and then come back to the beginning. And let's just rotate that maybe that way by seven degrees. And that way, as this plays and zooms out, it's rotating. The whole environment is rotating because the camera is rotating. And that's coming in through the windows. Lovely. Actually, let's just make this a little bit longer because I realize four seconds is not very long. So let's make that eight seconds. Cool. Now I've just realized that I forgot a layer. We actually need to be able to see that there are windows there because we've masked out part of that image. So right now there's nothing dividing space and inside. So we need something that the camera can come through to have that kind of effect as it's coming into the space station. So let's just look for glass. 
In fact, let's look for glass dirt. And that way we can have something that's got a little bit of a texture to it. Again, we wanna make this a decent size, let's say larger than two megapixels at least. That looks pretty good. So let's take that, that can be one of them. Save image as dirt one, and that can be dirt two. And let's bring those into After Effects and that way we can start positioning them. So we wanna position them just behind the ISS, the International Space Station. The reason for that is that the space station is gonna act as a mask over those windows. So we don't need to mask anything or change a position or anything like that. It's gonna be nice and easy. So again, make it 3D, enable motion blur, and then hit position and scale. Actually, we don't need the position, but the scale, we're gonna to wanna to bring this all the way down till it fits right behind that window, like so and then come down to toggle switches and change the blending mode to add. And we'll do the same thing with Dirt 2. And we'll put that behind a different window, change the blending mode to, to add, come back over to the toggle switches, make it 3D and scale it down until it'll fit nicely behind one of those side windows. So we'll bring it in here then just hit W to rotate it. And we're gonna rotate on the Z axis so that it fits nicely there and then just duplicate these layers a bunch of times so that they can fit behind the various windows that we're using. Now, if you need to mask any of them off, just go ahead and chop off the corners so they don't overlap on the other ones, or if you need to rotate them just to diversify the look a little bit, go ahead and do that as well. You can also scale them as and how you need. There's no severe overlap on any of these. Yeah, all good. So now, if you come back to the beginning, you'll see that as you come through along here, suddenly it comes in into that space station. You see the glass, you see the window, you see that texture, which just kind of amplifies that feeling of actually being there in that space. All right, so that's, that's basically our scene built. Now we need to start lighting it and animating the focus so that it shifts. So hit A twice on the camera, and that's gonna bring up all of your options. Depth of field is enabled. Focus distance is there, so we're gonna keyframe that. And then the aperture, 100 pixels is really nothing. We're gonna make that, let's say, 800 pixels. Okay, and then we're gonna turn that into a nonagon, so that it has nine sides, lovely stuff. The roundness, we're gonna bring that all the way up to 100, and let's say we wanna go for an anamorphic bokeh ball, so we're gonna go for 0.5% aspect ratio, and that's gonna turn everything that is circular into that kind of oval shape when it's blurred. And then just whack up that diffraction fringe so that it gives a nice kind of edge to that bokeh. All right, now you can just hit U on the camera and it's gonna bring up that one parameter that we've keyframed. Now, because our position is smoothed out using easy ease out, we're actually gonna easy ease that out as well, just because it'll make it a little bit more normal looking. And we're gonna select the camera layer and we're gonna select the earth layer. And we're gonna go to layer, camera, set focus to that layer. That way the stars are gonna be a little bit blurred out and the focus is actually gonna be on the planet Earth rather than the stars. Then as we come zooming out here, let's say about, yeah, about here, we're gonna to wanna to change the focus from there to the space station. So let's say about five seconds, there we're gonna select camera again, and then we're gonna select ISS, we're gonna to come to layer, camera, set focus to that layer. Now, sometimes you just need to adjust this. It can behave a little bit weirdly. Let's bring this transition a little bit sooner. That way that starts to pull focus there. And let's just bring that. So it looks about right there. Cool. Now, as it's coming out, pulls focus to the space station. It's gonna stay on the space station to about there. So again, let's select camera and space station, layer, camera, set focus. You don't wanna link them because otherwise the focus is gonna shift along with that layer and it's gonna be locked to it. So you're not gonna be able to pan that, to pan. You're not gonna be able to pull that focus to anything else. But by setting the focus like that, you maintain a pretty constant focus point on the item you want until you wanna pull focus to the other item, to the next item. So then let's say at the seven second mark, we're gonna to want to go to the glove. Then we're gonna select camera and glove and repeat that process one more time. Set focus to there, bam. 
That way the focus pulls to the glove. And from there until we get to this keyframe here, we're gonna do the same thing. And that way that focus is just gonna maintain at that distance. Again, for some reason it's not completely nailing it, so that's fine, we just need to reset that manually. There we go. Cool, that's the scene built and the focus set. The next step is actually animating the glove because the glove's not just gonna be sitting there. Someone's just taking it off in that space station and so it's slowly rotating away. So we're gonna hit R on the glove and just hit a keyframe on the Z rotation all the way to the end and rotate that by 15 degrees. Whoop, before we do that, you can see that the anchor point is there. Now a glove's never gonna rotate around something. It's always gonna rotate on its own center of gravity. So you wanna make sure that the anchor point is centered in the glove. So a quick way to do this is just come up to this here, pan behind tool, hold command or control and double click and it's gonna center that anchor point. If it's not quite centered on the glove, you can then just move it until it looks like it is perfectly centered. Okay, and now again, we can set that keyframe. Let's go for I don't know, 15, uh, 15, let's go for 20. Now this comes back through the window glove comes into the shot, focus shifts, and then shifts again to the glove while the glove is rotating, hanging in the abyss of space. Beautiful. I think that rotation can be a little bit more to be honest. Let's just go nuts and go for, let's go for 61%. Now what we can do is actually move that glove so that we come through where the thumb and finger join. So that looks pretty nice. All right, and that's all the movement done. Now, if you're happy with that, you just have to color correct it, bring it into your scene and make the sound design work to make it feel like it's a tight enclosed space surrounded by nothing. But I'm not quite done with this, to be honest. So first of all, I'm gonna color correct the stars. I'm gonna come up to effects and processes, put in curves, drop some curves on there. And we're just gonna drop the brightness of the stars in general because the stars are never that bright in person. All right, then I'm gonna copy those curves and on planet Earth, I'm just gonna increase the contrast a little bit because it's just, it's not quite punchy enough for me. So make a little S curve there, just like that. Okay, and that way it comes through there and we have all of that. Great, that's already looking a little bit better. But what makes this really, really interesting, what gives it that JJ Abrams look is to use optical flares by Video Copilot. If you don't have optical flares, highly recommend you get it. It's fantastic. If you do have optical flares, follow along. So we're gonna right click, create a new solid, which is the comp size, black, cool. We'll call it flares. And we'll just dump optical flares on there. We'll change the render mode to on transparent. And we'll just set the source somewhere, somewhere around there. Maybe even a little more off camera. Like there. We'll just come into the options and change the actual preset because the default one's a bit naff. So we'll go for, I don't know, blindness. That's the one that I used in the preview. I'll just drop the brightness a bit because that's way too bright. And now in optical flares, we can set foreground layers. So what we want to set as a foreground layer is the space station and the glove. So drop down layer one, source layer, we'll go for ISS. Layer two, we'll go for glove. And now because we masked the space station and the glove, you need to select masks. You might as well go for effects and masks instead of just masks. Uh, but you need to do that instead of source because otherwise it's looking at the source image, not the masked image. There we go. It's set and it's done. So now that looks like it could be the sun. Cool, cool. And now if we zoom out, you see that it suddenly blocks when it comes to that window. How cool is that? Now the problem is that the sun is not rotating while everything else is rotating. So what we need to do is keyframe that. What we can do to make this a little bit easier is just double tap A on the camera and just disable depth of field. That'll make it you know, a little more easy to see what you're actually looking at. And then on flares, just keyframe position X, Y and just bring that up to maybe there. And let's bring it in as well because it comes quite far away and just bring that right there. All right, again, we're gonna easy ease these so that they move at the same kind of pace as the rest of it. All right, and now if we just scrub through this, it comes along, gets blocked off by the space station, gets blocked off by the glove, and then reappears 
after the space station has passed. And that's looking, that's looking pretty awesome, to be honest. Now I think the final touch before we do any color correction is gonna to be to add a light in this. It's gonna be a spotlight. And I'm just gonna want it to basically silhouette that glove because the sun being that strong behind would silhouette the glove, I think. I think we can probably move this back a little bit. Just light up that whole space station a little bit more and maybe just give an edge to the glove there. All right, so now just head back into the camera with AA, turn back on your depth of field. And once you've got your depth of field back on, all you need to do now is color correct. So we're gonna right click, new adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring this down below the flare because I don't want the color correction actually affecting that flare. I think the flare is color correction in itself. And then we're just gonna dump Lumetri curves on there. Lumetri curves, Lumetri color. Color wheels, we're gonna go for, let's go for the teal and orange look, classic cinema. Okay, drop down the shadows into the teal, raise the midtones into the oranges, raise the highlights a little bit into the oranges, and then maybe just boost those highlights a bit, drop those shadows a bit, a little bit more. How's this looking? Comes along, beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. All right, so when you're ready, render that out, and this is what it looks like. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I hope you had fun doing it, and I hope to see you next time. Hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section to let me know what you thought, and I'll see you next time.